Bring back Glass-Steagall? The acquisition of investment management firms by financial conglomerates has been a major, if largely unrecognized, trend of the recent era. It poses compelling conflict of interest issues that demand public examination. Such cross-ownership has become more the rule than the exception among large management companies, from Citigroup to American Express to Goldman Sachs and Merrill Lynch, most of these firms are household names. Together, they control $2.3 trillion of mutual fund assets, including nearly $1 trillion of common stocks. Much of the acquisition activity that led to this conglomeration depended on the gradual dilution of the provisions of the Glass-Steagall Act of 1933, culminating in its effective repeal. That act was designed to remedy the unsavory alliance of commercial banking and securities underwriting that had been deeply involved in the widespread financial manipulation and stock rigging during the great bull market of the late 1920s, which contributed so heavily to the great bust that followed. But over time, legislative changes and lax regulation eroded the protections provided by Glass-Steagall, and the banking and securities fields again drew close together. During recent times, the combination of banking and underwriting functions seemed to repeat the sins of the earlier era. It may not be coincidental that subsidiaries of most of the banks are not only managing and distributing mutual funds, but also operating brokerage businesses, underwriting securities, and lending money and then syndicating loans to the very companies whose shares they hold in the portfolios of the mutual funds and pension accounts they manage. Indeed, in a suit brought on behalf of New York State Teachers Pension Fund, five firms paid $5.4 billion early in 2005 to settle claims that they failed to exercise due diligence in underwriting the bonds of WorldCom. Bank of America recently paid $69 million to settle claims against it for damages in selling the notes of Enron to institutional investors, while another five have been named in that same lawsuit. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. It is not clear that conglomeration is here to stay. Indeed, in the aftermath of the fines and settlements of recent years, the increasing regulation, and the new governance standards for mutual funds, there are some signs of its unwinding. In 2004, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, and Citigroup were reported to be considering the sale or restructuring of their asset management divisions. Early in 2005, American Express announced its intention to spin off its giant investment management and fund marketing unit. Only time will tell, but if such a reversal comes to pass, mutual fund shareholders should be the beneficiaries.